So, hello, I'm uh, I'm Pat Howlett. Uh, I've uh, been in the community for about uh, six years. I know uh, I know a lot of folks. I don't know enough, though. I don't know enough people, and uh, I'm always looking to new, uh, meet new neighbors and uh, folks that have uh, made this place the incredible place that it is, and also uh, folks that uh, that are coming here um, new to me and fall in love with uh, what you've all created and what we may be able to help with. And so I'm going to jump right in. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And I want to just be able to, um, I want to just be able to share a couple things here. And uh, the first thing will be just be, um, I'm not running against um, Mayor Rico or Councilman Goodall. I find them to be um, really good men. I like them both, have voted for them both. Um, I have no ax to grind. Uh, I uh, respect and like uh, the members of the council. Uh, I think the uh, staff of the town and the city have done uh, amazing things with uh, many times very little. So um, I have no ax to grind. Um, I'm, my intention will be to run a very positive, constructive campaign. Um, it will be to actually address um, certain specific things that, that I truly believe we need to move faster on. And, um, and I guess that's one of the things I'd like to help with in my experience. Uh, and so uh, I think one starts with, uh, you know, core values, philosophy, whatever you want to call it. But um, and this is on a page that I'll show you here in a little bit where you can communicate with me. But I, I kind of truly believe that if we take care of our seniors, those folks that have made Trinidad and this region and this area what it is and improve their quality of life and we make it better for them. And we take care of our youth to such a degree while they're preschool, in school, go to the college, and maybe raise their family here. If we do those two things, we help everybody in the middle. And I also am a uh, am, 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 am really strong advocate of locally owned business, local investment, uh, local food. I'm a localist. So when people say, Pat, are you a Democrat or a Republican? Um, I haven't been either of those things in decades. I've been a localist for about, uh, I guess, about 28 years now and been active in, uh, in, that, in that space and uh, proud of that work. Um, I think when we do that, when we take care of our seniors and the folks that have made this and we take care of the folks that will take over for us, I, I think everything gets more clear. I think our planning gets a little more clear and our speed um, moves a little faster. Um, and so that's one of the things that you'll, you'll kind of feel from me. Okay. As far as issues, I think it was really important to lay out some things. And again, in trying to run a positive and constructive, um, agenda, I'll be working in this town, no matter what happens. Um, I um, hope, and I've worked beside many of you and look forward to working mm -hmm. beside, uh, many others, but with regards to housing, I see that as a, as a, as an apex issue. Uh, if we can, we're, we're going to have a hard time. Um, I was 18 years in Winter Park, Frazier. I was on the town council in Frazier. I was mayor of Frazier for a period of time. And I saw it when it was smaller. Um, and then I saw we got behind. It got really hard to catch up. And I see now up there certain things. Nobody can live in town. Uh, people have to live what we call down valley. Well, down valley isn't going to be Raton because Raton's doing incredible things as well. I want folks that live here right now to be able to stay here. I want folks that own property here to be able to increase their wealth. I want folks that don't own property here, but are trying to raise a family here to be able to have some selection of housing. So towards that end, I think uh, some of the things we need to do, and, and again, this is not alien. The, the town council and the, and, the, and the mayor and council members and staff, they're already working on all of these things. Um, for me, it, it has to do with speed, um, a sense of urgency. I guess is what I intend to bring. And so update the uh, chapter 14 land use code. If you go to my, and you'll see me look away a little bit, I'm not trying to be uh, rude or anything, but if you go to my Facebook page, it's facebook.com pat for Trinidad. If you go there, you're going to see that I've actually uh, posted the links to the, the uh, to chapter 14, uh, the municipal code. And I encourage you to go look at that and, and take a take a peek at that. I think it's really important that we know because sometimes sometimes folks will get upset with the mayor and town council and staff. And, and you, you know what? They're 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 just following the ordinances and things that have been laid out there. And so uh, but some of those things actually need to change. And so that's uh, what I think we need to do as a community is look at Chapter 14, see what's in there that's actually restricting growth, see what's in there. Where we actually can empower some people to do some things and then move quickly with a sense of urgency 
uh, to get those things done. I am a big advocate and have spoken at the town council before on uh, accessory dwelling units. We did it successfully up in Winter Park, Frazier. They've done it in a lot of communities. And this is where somebody owns property here. Let's say they, they own their property there in, in Trinidad. Um, but the economy is going to move it so much that it's hard to keep that home. And uh, things are going to change, especially if we can't build new housing. What this allows somebody to do is on the garage out back, uh, in another area to build another dwelling unit. It's even with one person. This is how we do some infill. We get people to live in town. We already have the services there. It's a lot less money to build in town for the town and for the person um, than that. So what I want to try and do is I want to try and help folks who have property right now increase their wealth by increasing their property uh, value, but also increase their, their, their cash flow. Because a lot of times what we found in where I've lived in the past is folks may have been property rich, but cash flow not so much. And so I think I think accessory dwelling units, and I'll I'll go more into that as we move forward. Um, it, they're already on the books, but I don't see that happening. And I think there's some restrictions in there. And if again, if you look at Chapter 14, I think I think it'll be easy for anybody to see where those restrictions are and where where we're not motivating. We don't have to incentivize people. I think our economy. And housing prices are going to be enough incentive for most folks to understand that they can develop. I think it's important that we have an Airbnb registry. Now, again, I'm not looking at something that says you got to get a business license, you got to get inspections, you got to get those things, but we really need to get a handle on what is what is our housing inventory? How many of our houses are owned by folks or by entities, LLCs, that the only intention is to have those as short-term rentals? Again, go look at any of the mountain towns. We're I'm, I'm, I'm stealing somebody else's line, but Trinidad is the first mountain town in Colorado and we're the last to, to develop. So we can actually learn a lot from the successes and also the mistakes of other mountain towns that are already have been in outdoor recreation and some of these other industries for a long time. And so I do believe we need to get a handle on that. Um, and nobody should fear that, but we need to get a handle on that. And it's, to me, it's a registry um, and go from there. I actually believe there's there's lots, and I love what the TSC, the, the college is doing with regards to putting a program together to take some of the abandoned buildings, some of the buildings that an investor would not want to be in, uh, look at, and uh, fixing those up, uh, teaching skills and trades that, uh, that students can then take into the world, because we could use a lot more people in the trades. Um, that's a growth in, in industry, and I'll take an opportunity to plug uh, TSC, great college, any community in a rural area would love to have it. Um, you'll see us supporting it uh, considerably more. So, but I do believe we can create a land bank, and this land bank can be assets th that the city has or an entity, um, Tora entity has, in order to actually bring something to the table. So we don't get pushed around by bigger developers. Uh, sadly, that's what ends up happening sometimes when you really try and incentivize. Um, the uh, developers to come in and develop. Many times you don't get the housing needs that you want. Affordable housing is a, it's a tough, it's a tough thing uh, because it has different, um, different definitions. Uh, I believe what we need to have is diverse housing, housing of all sorts. And, and I'm talking about from tiny home and tiny home villages to accessory dwelling units to I'm okay with folks having whatever whatever it is with this America. So whatever it is they can afford and what makes them happy, but we do need to have workforce housing and, and that sort of thing. I do believe there's an opportunity to, um, to resolve uh, Cougar Canyon. I believe there's some things that have happened in the last year that, that may help, help accelerate that. I believe, I believe uh, housing could, uh, I believe there's, there's entities out there that could be pulling permits 30 days from now. Now, as, as to the hotel and the golf course, let's put that aside for a minute. I think that that needs to be thought differently and there needs to be a different tactic or strategy with regards to those areas. But I do believe there's an opportunity because of how that PUD was laid out with market value housing rather than it has to be these specific kinds of homes. I think there's an opportunity out there. So I want to keep moving forward that. I've been researching all kinds of things um, in, in this. I, I recommend anybody that can get a, a copy of the forensic analysis uh, uh, of the uncompleted Cougar Canyon Resort project. I'm trying to get permission to be able to share this. And if I can, um, I, I, uh, I, I will. Um, 
and a, a real estate transfer tax. And again, I understand some of these things um, are, th these things were opposed in many of the mountain communities that I lived in and studied forever. Um, but now they're almost, they wish they had been able to do some of these things, even folks in real estate. Sadly, most people, after some of these towns kind of grow up and get taken over by development, it's really hard for folks that actually made that community, folks who built that community. It's hard for them to, to stay there. Again, many times being property wealthy, but not cash flow. And so I do want to uh, see if we can't together as a community look into a real estate transfer tax with those funds going towards workforce housing. Housing to me is the apex issue. We resolve some of that. We won't resolve many of those things. Here's a, another another kind of thing I'll, I'll steal from somebody is we have we have problems uh, and there's dilemmas. Thus far, Cougar Canyon has been a dilemma. Um, I think there are solutions to it, but we've got to make we got to break it up into bite sized chunks. Um, problems have solutions to it, and our town council, the mayor, the staff, the the the, the town, the city staff have worked really hard to address a lot of those things. I understand folks want more. And I think this, 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 this town council, this mayor, they're doing, uh, and this city manager, I'm advocating for them. I think they're good people who are trying really hard. And Trinidad in our region has been hurt for, for decades. And so it, it takes a little while to get out of there, but I think we can prioritize some things in order to move forward a little bit which brings us kind of the infrastructure in order to build more housing, in order to do some of the things that, that others will want uh, in Trinidad and I think may best serve Trinidad is there, there are, sadly, there are sometimes rumblings, rumors, and, and, and innuendo and misinformation that goes out into the community that we all kind of grab hold of and think that was truth and it just, and it wasn't. Okay. But I believe it's easy for somebody to think that maybe power and light, um, there are some issues over there that they need help in. And when I say they, I mean us. Uh, we are power and light. Um, and so I think I think what we need to do is update and stabilize that. Um, we need to actually um, look at that uh, rather closely and make sure that we can support the things that are going to be being built. Okay. Um, to protect the watershed shed, um, at the, in, from fire. We've seen that. We live in a time where that's happening a lot more. Um, certainly up at North Lake, uh, we need to protect that. Now, I got to give um, credit for this uh, to um, um, Councilman Goodall and, and, the, and, and the mayor and the current city council. They understand, and, and, and the city manager, they understand this. Um, they're working towards it. Again, for me, it's urgency and priorities. Um, and so... Uh, city broadband. Um, I believe we need we we can attract more smaller businesses with good paying jobs if we can increase our our internet access. We're already on I twenty five, so we're an easy commute kind of area. We have a train running through us. If if you don't have a river, if a town doesn't have a river, a train, buildings like we have, infrastructure like people like you're not going to get it. You can't order it up. So we're blessed to have the things we have here, and I think we need to stabilize that. But I was an internet service provider for a fair portion of Colorado for about 13 years. And so I do understand this um, with regards to this, uh, this broadband. And uh, I, I think we need to continue our public works projects that are already in uh, thing. I, uh, and again, I understand that there's this desire that things look like they're taking forever, but we were coming out of, a, of some bad times in the past. And so these things will take time. I believe we give um, the current, um, mayor, council, and staff a little grace um, because I think I, I believe they're working uh, very hard on this. But but I think we need to prioritize some of those things, and some of those things have to do with ADA. Um, I like I said, I come from um, Fraser Winter Park. That's where I spent 18 years raised. That's where we raised our kids. The reality is our kids can't live there anymore. So the place they grew up, um, they can't afford to live. And they there ain't some a couple of them are engineers. They 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 do okay. It's just a really tough economy and it's really tough to buy into that, into that area. But we have the National Center for the Disabled um, in, in Winter Park and we, we've got about eight months of winter there and we have folks from all over the world. And so the disabled are part of our community. And I, what I would like to do is I would like to create a task force 
built up of folks that are disabled, that are riding our streets in wheelchairs or having to or, or having to maneuver where we are right now. And I'd like to empower them to prioritize some of the things we need to do, because maybe if we can get the prioritization from them, we can catch up on ADA compliance. We can get out of the, some of the lawsuits that we see and, and fighting we seem to constantly be into. We can work a little more co collectively and cooperatively. You'll always hear me use those words because I, I believe in that more than I believe in corporations and I'll frankness give you a little insight. But I think that may help steer some of our public works projects and we, we handle both those things. Um, social safety, I, uh, I, I believe this is one of those things that, that a community does. Um, and so one of the things I, I'd like to try and do is I'd like to try and again, engage people that are already working with folks in these areas. We have, uh, we have a lot of nonprofit organizations that are incredible. We have a lot of, um, we have a lot of social services. And um, I think that uh, we need to, um, I think we need to empower them and bring them to the table. And so with regards to panhandling, my, my, my suggestion would be to require them to get a permit. Now, they can get a permit at the soup kitchen. They can get a permit with uh, Brother Clay. They can get a permit at Health Solutions. Some of our points of entry where we want folks that are actually having issues and challenges, we want to provide some human triage. How can we best help you maneuver? Um, I'd like us to move towards a uh, warming shelter, a secure area where folks, when it gets minus 20, we can actually have a place for folks to at least be and stay warm and not move limbs and, uh, and move things forward. I do believe that we need to move people off the river. I think it would help our police department. I think it will help our economy. I think it would help. What I see of a good river walk is moms and strollers with kids being able to go there at any time. And we don't have that right now. And so I think what we need to do is try and create a safe camping space, move people to, Move the unhoused to, and keep in mind, whatever you think about this, there are many unhoused right now or on the on the verge of being unhoused that graduated from our Trinidad schools. They, they're, they're here, they're us, they're ours. Um, and so, but I do believe they're in a civil society needs to be rules. And so I think we need to make sure that there are drug and mental health and other services there, but we do need to move folks off the river. We need to move them to a safe and productive space where we can provide services, some people I think we can help easier than others. In all frankness, some people we may not be able to help. And so we need to partner with our, our, our big city friends up north and see if we can move people from here to those services where we can maybe move them back into that uh, area. And I would like to try and create, and again, I'm a localist, so you'll hear these kinds of things from me, but I believe we, um, I'd, I'd like to encourage uh, community gardens. Uh, I'd like to be able to help uh, with some of the in food insecurity in uh, in our in our town and i uh i'd like to help and again if we take care of our seniors and we can take so we know they're eating and we're take care of our youth and we we know they're getting nutrition i think all of us in the middle um work out a little bit better um enhance relationships um i believe we need the city needs better and closer relationships with the trinidad school district but uh, the other districts that uh, that serve our kids as well I believe together we can do a lot more. I want to build a much closer relationship between the city and Trinidad State College. I want to make sure that the county commissioners know everybody uh, uh, with the city and that the city knows everybody with the county because together, nobody has all of the resources that we need right now in order to move forward so that we can get a handle on some of the things that are going to happen. But together, I think we do. Uh, I certainly want to have more nonprofits and organizations at the table and trying to see how we can empower them and how we can in, in make it easier for them to do some of their jobs. And yes, I want to actually reach, make sure we're reaching out to Aguilar and Segundo and Raton over the, uh, over the other side and, um, and Honey and, and these other areas and make sure that we're working on things as a regional community because we will have a regional economy. Um, the last thing I want to do is, uh, and hopefully you see some of this through the way I'll run this campaign, um, is really open and transparent communication. I would like us to update the city website. I have some experience in that area, so I can at least help with regards to contractors. I want to empower the city communication manager. I thought it was very good of the city and the city manager and the, and the council 
to provide us with an economic development director, an outdoor recreation director, and a communications manager. I, I, I wanna help empower those folks, whether it be increased staff training or whether it be increased opportunities for those folks to go. But I, I do wanna empower um, things. I think a lot of times when, when we, the citizens, get a little upset with, uh, with the, the, the folks who are representing us, I think a lot of that has to do with miscommunication or poor communication. Um, I want to just tell you, I'll be available. Um, and then you'll find me cooperating with the media. You'll find me cooperating with other folks. I'm going to make it really easy for those folks. So in kind of closing, I've got this, uh, I've got this uh, site up here on Facebook. Easy for you to get to there. Uh, I've created uh, my own site, patfortrinidad.co for Colorado. And the main thing there is I really would like, none of these are required. You don't need to give me your name. It, this could be anonymous. But in any of these areas that you feel that you can contribute, either Pat, these are where problems are, and this will all be public information, so it's not just to Pat, it's to us, it's us together. Um, but these will be things there, and um, go ahead and uh, you can look at that. I do want to in, in, increase this so it's very, very easy to get information, find out what's going on, find out where we are, and go from there. So. Um, this was, I uh, wanted to keep this at less than a half hour, um, and which I'll always try and do. Uh, we're at 22 minutes. And so hopefully this recorded well, if not, uh, you know, I, I tried and I will uh, continue trying. And so uh, this is Pat Hallett. Mm -hmm. um, happy Wednesday and make it a great uh, week.